So now what we want to do is walk through each different type of function. Remember we have nine because there can be one, two, or three inputs and one, two, or three outputs. And we want to talk about the visualizations that make sense. We talked about either looking at the inputs and outputs together, which is a special thing called the graph, or looking at just the outputs, or looking at just the inputs that lead to a particular output. We're going to look at each of those nine different types in terms of um, which of those three visualizations makes sense, or um, which one will we, we have to use. So <clears throat> let's see. This is the case that you're most familiar with. If I were to write a function like um, y equals sine x, or we could use the notation f of x equals sine x, right? And this is a scalar valued function of a scalar. because a scalar valued because a scalar comes out, function of a scalar because a scalar goes in. So you could also, let's see, this is a, this is a nonlinear function. Um, but if you want to think about a linear one, maybe f of x equals 2x. That would be an example of a linear function of this type. So the, the visualization you're probably most familiar with would be, um, would be to look at the graph. Since there's only one input and one output, it only takes two dimensions to represent inputs and outputs together. So for example, if we wanted to look at the graph of sine x, then we would see a graph something like this. And, okay, going on infinitely, it's a 2 pi periodic function. So we can see the inputs and the outputs um, together in that case. It takes two dimensions to do that. Or this other one, the linear example, if we want to look at the, the line, let's see, the line y equals 2x would be a little steeper like that. So y equals, y equals 2x. There's that, there's that function. But, so, there's the graph, inputs and outputs together. I guess we could also think about this as a parametric curve. For example, we could think about um, the sine x could be, um, maybe you have a, a mass on a spring, and so maybe, maybe this is modeling a mass on a spring, and uh, so it's hanging there from the ceiling on the spring, some mass, and you come along with your hammer, and um, you 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 bang that spring. So your hammer comes in here, and boom. And then what happens is the 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 um, the mass then goes up and comes back down, and then goes up and comes back down, right? So we can think if we look at the motion, we're just looking at. It's how far is the is the mass away from its equilibrium point, and then we have if we have this sine graph, right? Then we're just looking, we're thinking about the outputs alone. They just lie along a line. So I guess we could we could think about a, a parameter, think about that in terms of just the outputs. We have it oscillating here between these values. Uh, that visualization doesn't give you too much, but um, what if we had a car going down the highway? So we have this this highway, and we just measure position based on the mile markers. And then we could think about just one axis to represent the position as a function of time. Um, maybe that position, if you're going 75 miles an hour, would be um, 75t, right, where t is in hours. So if we had bounds on t, maybe we start at time zero, and we drive, we take a three-hour trip. And so we'll go from 0 to, let's see, 75 times 3 would be 225. So we could, we could, we could look, at, um, look at this as a parameterization, right? We just have this se segment, pretty boring, right? And we're going out in that direction, just looking at the outputs. Suppose we could also look at just the inputs. So we could say, OK, well, for what values of x is the sine of x equal to some particular value that's valid. So maybe we want to ask, when is the sine of x equal to 0? Then we could look at all those points, right? We could just look at the input points that give us a value of 0 for the sine. Well, it's 0 at 0. It's also 0 at pi, and it's 0 at 2 pi. So we just have a whole bunch of regularly spaced points forward and backwards. So this would be a really simple example. Of course, the graph is very handy, right? We could also look at the outputs of a function of one variable, although it's a little bit boring. 
or we could look at the inputs of this function, so just the inputs that lead to a particular value. So if we wanted to know more about the function, we could look at the inputs that lead to 0, we could look at all the inputs that lead to 1, and so on, right, in order to get a sense of this function. That would be spending a lot of time. When you, could, when you can see the graph, you can get that information pretty quickly. Okay, so let's go up a level here and talk about um, functions with um, one input and two outputs. We've already seen some examples of these. Since, um, since there are two outputs, this function is vector valued, so it has a, the output is a vector. Um, we could think about those, those two outputs as being maybe a location in the plane, so we could call them x of t and y of t. So here we have an example of the kind of function we're talking about. Maybe a specific example would be um, what if x of t is cosine t and your y location is sine t. Now, we could look at the graph of this function. So we could think maybe this could be our x-axis, this could be our y-axis, and then we could have our t-axis going this way. So what's going to happen in this case then when we look at the graph is we know that this is going to be going around in um, the x and y points will always lie on a, cer on, a, on a cylinder basically in x, y, t space because x squared plus y squared is equal to 1 and then as t moves on we're, we're going we're gonna to stay on that cylinder but we're going we're gonna to curl around alright that's one way of visualizing that's the graph of this function we can do that although we've seen it's more practical just to look at instead of looking at it as it's curly q let's just look down at it, not look at the input variable, not consider the input variable, just think, okay, well, we just have, right, we have a circle, we're going around that circle in the counterclockwise direction. So this, this is as a parametric curve, just looking at the outputs. And then our, um, I guess we could also look at level sets, although that wouldn't be um, very handy because, um, but we'd have to think about all the all of the all of the values of x and y that get mapped to a particular point. So the level sets might be kind of boring or not so useful in this particular case, especially when we have two really nice visualizations in terms of the graph or as a parametric curve. We could also have um, um, let's see parametric plane curves that are linear. Here here would be a linear example. Um, R of t equals 2t comma 3t, right? So your x location is 2t, your um, your y location is 3t. Um, because a comma in a vector, you can think of that as meaning over, this is actually a, a column vector. So it's the column vector 2t, 3t, which is also a 2 by 1 matrix 2, 3 times a one by one matrix T, if you like. So you can represent this linear thing as a matrix times a variable, in this case, T. Um, the visualization here, if, um, if X equals 2T and Y equals 3T, then we have in the plane, let's see, X is 2T, so T is X over 2. We can plug that in here and find that Y equals three halves x. So in the xy plane we could look at this parametric curve, it's just this curve. Now the way we've set it up as t increases x and y increase so we know that, that x is always getting bigger and y is always getting bigger we must be moving in this direction on this parametric curve. So that's how we could visualize it as a parametric curve. We could also if we wanted look at it look at the graph which would include the input t together with uh, the two outputs, x and y, and we would see basically that as time moves on, then we move out in a line. Of course, the shadow, if we were to shine a light back on this line, we would see this shadow in the um, xy plane. So we'd just be, imagine this line moving out forward as t goes on. Um, here's another example of one where the visualization is probably best as 
um, as a parametric curve. So um, let's just give an example. This is a vector valued function of a scalar. So uh, we could come up with an example. We could think about the scalar as being time. That's the input. And then we'd have three outputs, which we could think of as being a location in three-dimensional space. So we have one input, t. And for each time, we have a location. And so this is going to create some kind of curve. So we could um, we could parameterize this curve. Maybe we could do um, something linear. So if we had 3t minus 5t and 4t, there's our parameterization. Or we could write that as a matrix, so as a column vector, as 5t, 4t or even see it as a matrix times uh, a variable. So the matrix 3, negative 5, 4 times this scalar value t. That's its matrix form. Um, if we want to look at this, this is a line in space, right, with direction. Uh, so the vector that points in the direction of this line is um, the vector 3, negative 5, 4. So we could graph that. Well, we could we could depict that vector. We can't actually look at the graph of this function because a graph means the inputs and outputs together. And 1 plus 3 is 4. That would require four-dimensional space to do. But we can look at all the outputs of this function as they change with t. Let's see, this vector goes forward 3. And in the y direction, it goes back 5. And in the z direction, it goes up 4. So if we move out here, we can find the head of this vector here. So there's our vector v. Of course, taking v and making it longer or shorter, then just make, multiplying it by t just makes it longer and shorter. So we're going to get this whole line through the origin in the direction of vector v. And as t increases, then um, x is increasing, y is decreasing, and z is increasing. So we're moving along the line in that direction. We could also have something that is um, that is nonlinear. So um, let's see, we maybe we could have r of t equals. We could do like a helix. Um, maybe x is cosine t, y is sine t, and z is t. So. I can tell that um, x squared plus y squared is always equal to 1. So I know we're always on a cylinder, radius 1, that goes around the z-axis. But as time increases, we rotate around, and the z-value gradually climbs. So this is going to create a helix or a coil like this. So that would be the graph of the parameterization. As t increases, z increases, so we must be moving along this coil in this direction. There's a, vis there's a view of the outputs, right? We don't see the time, but we know it's there because we're moving along the curve in time. We can't draw the graph of this. So um, this would be, we would call this a parametric space curve. That would be our visualization for a function with one input and three outputs.